Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And um, this is going to be kind of my restaurant wine series. I'm not necessarily going to call it the titles restaurant wine series because, because I, I don't know, maybe I will. Or maybe I'll try to come up with my usual creative, or I think creative, uh, titles for things. But I have seven wines I'm going to be doing today. So the next seven episodes. But, uh, so I'm going to be doing seven wines in one day, um, one sitting. So uh, these are wines that you can find on a wine list in a restaurant. Um, wide variety, um, everything from lower, lower price wines to higher price wines. Nothing too expensive. I um, haven't gotten to those yet. But uh, a sampling of what you might find at a restaurant restaurant wine list, something a little bit more than just a casual diner, casual dining wine list, though some of these might be found on a casual dining wine list. Maybe this one in particular might be like a, not necessarily a house wine, but it will be one of their at least house or medium wines. I have a couple other ones that might be on the higher end of like just regular casual dining. But this is kind of like a step up, so we're going to have higher wines. And so the first one um, is... I'll get to something else in a little bit. The first one here, I have the 2008 Blackstone Winemaker Select Merlot from California. Um, now this wine is, uh, and, and we're going to talk about this in every single wine, but this wine I bought at Specs for $7.99, sorry, $7.79 at Specs. And in a restaurant, typ a typical restaurant, at least in this area of the country, you're going to spend between $25 and $35 a bottle. So did you catch that? $7.79 is what I paid at Specs. It's going to cost you at a restaurant for the bottle between $25 and $35. Uh, now very likely um, a glass of this is going to be anywhere between 6 and 8 I don't really have the glass prices. Or whatever. Well, I mean, I have them, but you know, not all these wines are available by the glass. And um, just as another point of reference, the um, cost of this is going to be very close to the, um, I have to reset the phone because I can't access the pictures that I took um, recently um, of my wine bottles and stuff. So we're just going to let that reset. But it, the, uh, the cost of this wine for the restaurant, it's going to be somewhere in the six to eight dollar range. It's going to be very close to what uh, I paid retail. It's going to be very close to what the, what the restaurant pays the distributor. And I'll leave it at that. All right, um, a few things also about this. Uh, the Blackstone Winery, you know, I, they, I guess they've been around for a little bit. I don't really have much on their website. They don't have very much information as far as how long they've been around. But um, uh, the actual winery, and I should have kept it on that page while I'm talking. The actual winery uh, is in Sonoma County. So, um, but that doesn't mean that the grapes came from Sonoma County. Now, something to know about this wine in particular is that, um, uh, or versus what they have on their website, is that uh, the website does not mention the 2008 vintage, but it has the 2007 vintage. So I'm going to give you just a quick little thing about how vintages will vary and people will ask, well, how come this wine, what's the deal about these wines and, and what's so special about it and blah, blah, blah. Um, first of all, let's go over the, the rules, the, the law of the land, so to speak. Um, in the United States, to call a wine a particular varietal, you have, it has to be at least 75%. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. Hello. Um, no emergency call. Uh, it has to be at least 75% of that varietal to call it Merlot. And in this case, the um, uh, 2007 
was 86% rollout. The 2008, however, and I don't know how this person got the information. They may have emailed the, the winery, but I, you know, I work, I pop it and go, okay, I'm going to do these reviews. And then I don't really tell wineries ahead of time the, the information I need normally. But 2008 was 78% Merlot. All right, so what else is in this wine? This particular wine has 11% Syrah, 6% Tanat. Um, kind of impressed with that. 4% Petite Syrah and 1% Cabernet Sauvignon. Now in 2007, the makeup was, this is why I'm kind of impressed about the 2008 makeup, 86% Merlot, 10% Syrah, 3% Cab Cabernet Sauvignon, and 1% Zinfandel. So we have Tanat and Petite Syrah in here, dropped the Zin, kept the, uh, kept the Cabernet Sauvignon in the Syrah. So um, that's going to be interesting. Uh, the uh, suggested retail price is $10, and again, this is from another blog, uh, a gentleman called the goodwineguru.com. I don't really know much about this particular blog. It was just, it came up when I looked up the, uh, did the search. So good job. You were one of the, I think you were the top person on uh, Google when I searched for the 2008. So um, we're going to go and review it and uh, check it out. I, I like the nose on it. I mean, it's it's an eight dollar bottle of wine. Um, I get more of the raspberry. I get a little smoke though, a little earth, a little minerality to it. Uh, I don't consider it really a very fruit forward wine. I am getting a bit of heat, so I'm getting a bit of the alcohol. Um, it's, uh, not that it really matters what the alcohol is in, in general, but it is 13 and a half, nothing unusual. It's not like it's 15, it's not some big Zinfandel that's 15%, but, you know, I get a hint of that. Something else just now I got. Kind of beefy. Kind of barbecue-y. So a little bit of the smoke, a little bit of like a barbecue sauce, meatiness to it. Uh, looking good so far. But like I said, not really fruit forward. Again, I still get... Um, it's okay. Another thing, uh, the order of the wines I'm doing in, they're going to be light body to full body. This is somewhat light body. I mean, it's not really light. Um, I'd say it's kind of a medium body, which is where it's supposed to be on the uh, on the wine list, is in that medium body thing. But it's going to be the lightest bodied of all the wines I'm tasting. Um, but I get, I don't get a lot of fruit on it. To me, it's more vegetal and, and mineral, you know, and earthiness. I'm getting kind of a spicy, like spices type of thing. Just in general, um, it feels a little vegetal. It's not like I'm getting like all those massive jalapenos and green peppers, but I, I get that kind of feel. It's got a bit of earthiness to it. I can, the tannins are kind of light, but they're, they spread out a little bit, but I don't have, they're not, they're not taking over my entire mouth. Um, I'm getting more of the peppers now that I really like swirled around the mouth. I like it. I, this is to me a barbecue wine. You can pair it with steak, but if I was having ribs, if I was having um, anything with a barbecue sauce on it, this this would be just a, a nice wine just to put with it. Just it's casual wine. It's nothing. Um, I don't think it's anything complex, but I think it's well made. Um, the finish is decent. Um, I'm still tasting it. It's not like it disappeared like uh, a couple wines ago. You know, it's like it, it, I liked it, but it disappeared. 
I think for, you know, especially for an $8 bottle of wine, I think, you know, if, if, if you can find it, Blackstone, I've never had the Blackstone label. I've seen it at several, you know, of course, all over the place in, in uh, restaurants, not restaurants, um, grocery stores, uh, and I've seen it in a few restaurants, so it's, you know, they're, they're making, a, or at least their distributors are doing a good job in the San Antonio area of getting it on some national, uh, national restaurant brands uh, on their wine lists. Um, maybe not the San Antonio distributor, but some of the national chains and more of the local stuff. Uh, so doing a good job of getting it on there. It's a good wine, some Merlot. It's, it's going to do well with about anything you want to pair it with, but because of the, how it's, it's not a fruit-forward wine, I think it, it's going to work well with, with more of the uh, barbecue type of thing. Rating. I like it. Um, is it super, super great? Uh, no, but um, for what it is, I'm going to say 86. Again, 86 is not a bad score. Yeah, 86. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, all right, so contest winner. Oh, I forgot to look this. Get that, get that set up. Contest winner. Well, guess what? Somebody got the. Got, somebody figured out that that was Bob. From uh, one of those enhancement commercials. Um, now I have to find the gentleman that that. Oh, so Sean Hall, who is local. Props to San Antonio peeps. Sean, I'm gonna be sending you a, a, a thing of stickers. Uh, I think if you do that today or tomorrow, head to the post office. I had a post office box now, really just so that you know. I mean, I know I'm everywhere, and everybody knows who I am, but. Uh, I don't need my return address on that stuff. So I got a P.O. box uh, so I can be even a little bit more legit on things. But uh, Sean, I'm going to be sending you those uh, stickers. Uh, I better see some pictures and um, as to uh, where, where you put them up. I had, hadn't thought of what the contest is going to be this time. Uh, plus, I need to get more stickers. I have a couple more sheets. It's not like the only sheet of stickers. Um, I hadn't really thought about what my contest is going to be. So, uh, so yeah. Um, this is Wednesday's show. This is today's show. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be live on Ustream doing some Finger Lake Winery Rieslings, uh, Finger, Lake region, Finger Lakes region of New York. And um, so stop on in. I have a new Skype name, 1337 Wine. So if you have me as a friend on Mars Quadruple Eight, Mars 8888 um, on Skype, uh, I still have that account, but I'm gonna, I have my wine account now. Um, Leet Wine, L E E T Wine, is the UStream account. I'll make, I'll post it somewhere. I'll, I'll have it on here. But 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, I'll be live on UStream, and I also have the Skype working. If you want to dial in, and if you're tasting any of the any of the Finger Lake Rieslings, um, join us. If uh, you have the specific ones, I'll, I'll know which ones I have later today. I haven't gotten the delivery yet, but I'll know those specific wines, specific wines later today, uh, and I'll tweet out which ones I've got. So if you happen to be a follower that's got this, doing the same thing as I am, uh, you'll know if you have the same wines or not. And that's why I really am hoping for to get a lot of people with the same wines. I know the whole point is just in general, it's kind of like the Twitter thing, but I really like it to have it. And that's one of my goals is to like get some of the other people like NM Wine. Uh, Lindevers, people like that, maybe Rick Bacchus, to get some of these wine bloggers, uh, Ben Simmons, Simons, not Simmons, Simons, um, to get some of you guys together and do the same exact wine. Uh, I got Sam out in Australia looking maybe do some uh, Kendall Jackson, uh, what Zinfandel I think it is, and that'd be kind of cool is I'll be doing like at three in the morning and he'll be doing it at three in the afternoon. Um, so we're looking to do like the same wines, kind of like I do the Skype interviews with winemakers. By the way, if you're a winemaker, let me know. Had somebody, I had somebody uh, email me the other day. Um, his wines are like his one wine is ninety dollars a bottle. Um, I kind of said that's probably not my target audience. I'd be more than happy to do it, but uh, I didn't want him to think that uh, um, my target audience was people for his wine. That's the other thing. If your wine's not a good fit for the show, don't send it. I mean, I'll take it. I'll drink a three hundred dollar bottle of wine. You, if you want to send me, if Petrus, if you want to send me some wine, we'll do a Skype thing. Go, you know, you know, a few hundred dollar bottle of wine, a grand, you know, thousand dollar bottle of wine. I'll do it. 
but my target audience is not the type of audience that you're probably looking for. So as a marketing thing, it'd be a waste. All right, that's going to do it for this show because I kind of went a little overboard on time, and we'll see everybody again next time.